What does she look like in that coat? I bet there'd be room in there for me as well as you. Yeah, it was the only one we had. I bought it in Bernardo's. I couldn't afford a new one. And it's her first day at school. I'm dead nervous. Looks like you're doing fine to me. Mm. Anyway, I'm glad I caught you. I just wanted to wish you good luck for the savvy. Oh, right, yeah. Well, it is today you're due in court, isn't it? Well, I was supposed to be. Oh, they haven't changed the date at the last minute, have they? Oh, no, nothing like that. I've decided I'm not going. Looks like they're demolishing the gymnasium. I get it. Hello, Bell Simpson. No, I'm sorry, JC. Nat's not here at the moment. Can I give him a message? Yeah, I'll do my best, but I'm not promising. Is Jules going to be there? No? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him. Bye. What does Biffa Bradley want this time? My head in a platter. He wants you to go around to the house. Maybe he wants to horsewhip you in front of the servants. No, not his house. Your house. The house he bought for you and Jules. He wants you to sort out the wedding presents. I'm not going. Will it be all right? Jules won't be there. She probably can't face it any more than you can. Mum, I know what I did was wrong, but... We've been through all this. Look, I'm sorry, Nat, but you're going to have to take some responsibility here. We can't keep covering for you. What would it take? Two hours, and then the whole thing would be sorted. You never need to see the Bradleys again. Please, Mum, I can't. I'll tell you what, I'll come with you. Oh, great, that's going to make JC hate me even more than my mummy to hold my hand for me. Come on. We'll all go. We'll get it done quicker between us. And if there's three of us, JC won't have a chance. You can hit him over the head with a shovel, and we'll sit on him till he begs for mercy. We'll show the mighty JCB he can't bully us. Glad to see the back of this lot, won't you? I wish it was. Tell you the truth, mate. I'd keep all of them if I could. Oh, come on, Mick. Haven't they caused you enough trouble? I know, I know. Can't help having a few regrets, though, can I? For all the time and efforts I've spent over the last few months. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? It's too much time and effort. Yeah. I know I got carried away. It's just. So it gave me a bit of pride. So I achieved. Myself. When you've got two great kids, that's an achievement. Yeah, you're right. And they're more important than anything. So, uh, did you get rid of everything? The steroids and that? Oh, come on, Mick. What are you angling to them for? I don't know. Just hold on to them. Just, just in case. Just in case what? Giant takes tax challenges you to a fight. Yeah, I know it's stupid. Too right it is. Haven't they brought you enough trouble? The thing is, Mick, they were making you feel irritable and aggressive. And from what the doctor down the Aussie said, you got off lightly. And the worst thing is, your kids feel they don't know you anymore. Get shut of them, Mick. Put it all behind you. Mr. Crosby, I won't keep it a minute. I've got a client having a muzzy bleached. <laughs> really? I just wanted a quick word about Sammy. Not more trouble, I hope. Well, I'm just a bit concerned. She's due in the court today in about an hour. Oh, yes, yes, if I'm not mistaken. It's the uh, mode of trial hearing today. But she's just told me she's not going to show up. Oh, honestly. 
She's supposed to be proving to the court that she's a reliable and trustworthy person. Could you talk to her? I know she'll listen to you. Well, I'll do my best. Look, try and keep her talking for a minute, will you, while I go and pay for my petrol? Yeah, and if she still doesn't show up, you could always kidnap her. Lou get off all right? Oh, yeah. I'll have to go and pick her up again in a couple of hours. Do you know, I still haven't found anyone permanent to look after while I'm working in Lelouth. But I thought the social workers were going to sort you out with a childminder. Yeah, but they can only help during the day. Everyone I've rang charge 5 50 an hour for night work. I mean, I can't afford that. That's more than you get paid, isn't it? Yeah. Samantha, hello there. Hiya. Look, I'd better get back to the salon and I'll be out of the job as well. See you later. See ya. Right, see you, Miss Phelan. Right, I'm gonna nip into the garage to get some chocolate and then I'll let you drive me back to the close if you like. Actually, um, I did want to have a word with you about this court business. I hear you don't intend to go. Oh, has someone been blabbing, has she? And if that's true, I can tell you, you are making the most dreadful mistake. Look, I am not standing there in court listening to some overprivileged prat telling me how to bring my own kid up. It's all right for them, with the nannies and their au pairs. I'm on my own and I've got no money. I'm doing the best I can. I know how you feel. No, you don't. I mean, you're one of them, aren't you? You've got the right accent, the right background. Look, I happen to believe the system has let you down badly. But I can tell you, you're not doing Louise or yourself any favours by not turning up. They'll just see that as contempt of court. Oh, that sounds just about right. Look, I haven't got any time for a gang of no-olds. All right, then. What do you think they'll do if you don't show up? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, shall I? If you don't knuckle down and do things their way, you could end up by losing Louise again, this time for good. Or the court might decide to make an example of you. You know they have the power to send you to prison. But I didn't do anything wrong. Damage limitation, Samantha. That's what this is all about. Now, you listen to me. You are not going to hide away. You are going to this court today, and you are going to show them that you are a good mother and that you're prepared to do whatever it takes to look after your daughter. Now, come on, get in. Why, well, are you coming with me? Yes, of course I am. Apparently, I speak their language, so I can translate for you, can't I? Thank you for calling Pizza Parade. And remember, we make the best pizzas in town. Any town. It's a bit over the top, isn't it? But any pizzas. Hey, hang on a minute, kid. Each and every pizza is unique, lovingly handcrafted by a master pizza maker. Mwah. <laughs> Stacey, you. What? Nothing wrong with taking a bit of pride in your work. So, to what do I owe this unexpected pleasure, then? Oh, do I need a reason now to visit me old dad? Aye, aye, aye. That's the old, if you don't mind, madam. I'm in my prime, me. Pro, just come round to insult me, have you? No. I'm missing you. We haven't seen much of you since we got back from the States. And whose fault's that? Hmm? You'd be seeing me all the time if you were back home where you belong, love. Look, Lindsay. You don't want to be dossing down with strangers when you could be with your own family. Well, the Dixons aren't exactly strangers, are they? Love, they're not your real family. Why don't you come home, hey? I mean, your mum are beginning to think we must have upset you or something. Don't oh, be daft. Hey, listen, wait till you see what we've done to the extension. We're like a little palace in there, Look, love. Dad, me and Mike went on holiday to get away from this hassle. And now we're back, it's like we haven't even been away. Me and your mum, we just want to do what's best for you and Kylie. I know. But look, we've got loads to sort out. We've got to get jobs, find a place of our own, and we've got to start to build a future together as a family. Yeah. Well, look, why don't you come round and see what we've done? Listen, your mum's out tonight with Val. I'm in on my own. Do your bit of tea if you like, eh? All right. I mean, it might not be important to you where you're living at the moment. Pizza parade. What am I going to do? I mean, I thought the magistrates were going to sort everything out today. I can't believe they made me go to the Crown Court. I thought that was for, like, real criminals, murderers and that. Yes, it is, but the problem is that, obviously, the police see your case as a very serious matter. Yeah, but why do they have to drag it out so much? I mean, it's like torture. I mean, I've got to come back here in a week. That's right, isn't it? Yes, but that's only for the committal hearing. Basically, there's just a paper shuffling exercise to make sure all the right documents are sent off to the Crown Court. But then I'm afraid there is another wait before you enter your plea there. You don't 
think they're going to lock me up, do you? No, 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 no. It wouldn't make any sense, Samantha. Well, the object nowadays is to keep families together, not split them up. Yeah, no, but, but Crown Court, I mean, they could put me in prison for a long time. You said so yourself. Oh, Mr. Crosby, what am I going to do? I mean, I could go away for years. Oh, God. Well, this must be the wedding present to end all wedding presents. Wish someone had bought me a house when I got married. Better than the usual toaster. I'm very quiet. But you're having regrets now. Wish you had stayed with Jules after all. And here, madam, Wee. is the luxury penthouse suite. <laughs> with all mod cons. Floor, ceilings, walls, you know. Hot and cold running bed bumps a lot. <laughs> now look, kid. You've got your own space. And all the privacy you need. No more Bev sticking her nose in every five minutes. Oh, I'm dead impressed. You and me, Mum have done a lovely job. Yeah, well, so you should be, girl. Your mum's put her heart and soul into this place. And eh? She'll be over the moon if you move back in, you know. And so would I. Right, let's get these pizzas out. Otherwise, we'll be having burnt offerings. <laughs> Well, this is it, lad. Have a good look round. See what you've chucked away. Shall we make a start on this lot? Is an air's towel set, eh? Not much good to you, are they? I don't think they do as it is, do they? Funny if it wasn't so bloody tragic. Did you just get him round here to have a go? Have you thought what you're going to say to all these people? I've just remembered. Sorry, the marriage is off. Forgot to mention I'm a dirty pervert. No. Not easy to explain, is it? Especially when my own daughters beg me not to tell anyone the real reason for this farce. She can't stand the shame of it all. Even though she is the innocent party. You know, I didn't come round here for another post-mortem. Don't you get smart with me, sunshine. Nat. I need to talk to you now. You don't want to waste any more time on him. I know why everything went wrong. I've worked it all out. Making draft excluders out of old tides, say. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I went down to give a few talks to some young offenders. I was asked to tell them the truth about drugs, wasn't I? Well, I'm a survivor, aren't I? I've come through this success story, mate. I can't believe it. I mean, how did you go? Weren't you nervous or anything? No, I walk in the park. Do you know something, Lynch? It's dead rewarding. You know the thought that something you do or say can actually make a difference to someone's life. And get me sunglasses on, your halo's dazzling me. <laughs> hey, turned into a nice little learner, I know, okay? <laughs> Hang on a minute, wait. I thought you said it was voluntary work. It is. But I've got to claim my expenses, haven't I? <laughs> what expenses? A quid for your bus fare into town and back. Are you joking, aren't you, girl? Listen, busy man, me, I've got to take taxis everywhere. <laughs> and there's this dead reliable little taxi firm I know. Corky cars, it's called. Oh, Dad, you're never fiddling your expenses, are you? Creative accountants, it's called, <laughs> if you don't mind. And anyway, why not? The rest of them do it. Well, the words leopards and spots just creep into mind at the minute. Don't you be cracking on to your mum, do you? <laughs> I've got this mega expenses opportunity coming up soon, I know. Mm. I've been invited on this residential course at a posh hotel. Are you going? Mm. Well, I'd love to. But I don't think Mick would be too impressed. I mean, how's he going to manage without his number one oppo? <laughs> Come on, get that down your neck. Put hairs on your chest, that kid. <laughs> Is that all that's stopping you going, where? You're only part-time anyway, Dad. I know. But that doesn't mean I can go and leave Mick in it, though, does it, right? <laughs> but it's such a big chance for you. I mean, it could even lead to a proper job. <sighs> With my track record? <laughs> nah. I gave up over that a long time ago, kid. Some of us are born losers. Yeah. Here you go, mate. Oh, 
Oh, I just thought I'd nip in and tell you the kids are doing really well. Fee's even trying to persuade them to have an early night. What this hour? But no chance. <laughs> to drug them first. Right. They are okay, aren't they? Of course they are. How's the head? That's not bad. Leo and Gemma don't want to come home, do they? Listen, Mick, I think you're just going to have to give them a little bit of time, mate. It would be a different story if the mother was still here. We love the bones of Josie, sir. She might have been a bit soft with them at times, but... Well, they love the dad as well, you know. Yeah, but we can't be a proper family, can we? Just me on my own. Sin, do you ever feel... Do you ever feel lonely? I don't know, um... I suppose so, sometimes. I'm no good at me, I need to know that there's somebody out there for me. Somebody who really cares for me and the kids. Nothing's been the same since Josie left us. If I'm honest, I don't think I ever really got over it. Even after all this time. Yeah. Sometimes catch myself thinking about me and Mandy, you know. What it would have been like living together as a family, being a proper dad. I've lost it, haven't I? I've screwed up so many things. All I had left was my kids. And now even they don't want to know. They'll come home if you just give them time. How can I show them that they're the most important thing in my life if they're too afraid to come near me? What can I do to make them come home, sir? We never stood a chance, did we? And we both know why, don't we? This is the problem. Our families won't let us get on with our own lives. But Jules, love, me and your mum... I couldn't even think about going away and getting married quietly in case I upset you and me mum. I was only doing what I thought best. Best for who? For you? For me mum? I know me family pushed you into having a big posh wedding and all that. And I knew you were only going along with it to make me happy. But they just pushed you too far. They've took over our lives. <sighs> We'd be all right if they left us alone. Is that why not? Is it because you were pushed into it? You've just got to face the fact that you're married to a sick old love. There's no need for that. And you're as bad. You and Ollie have smothered Nat. You've never let him stand on his own two feet. We've never stopped Nat doing anything. That's half of the trouble, if you ask me. Look, we can't blame anyone else for what happened. All this is down to me. It's my fault. No, Nat. We love each other. We could have had a wonderful life together, but they wouldn't let us. Look, Terry, I've said I'm sorry. Yeah, and I'm sorry I've dropped you in it, but I can't leave Louise on her own, can I? I, I know it's not your problem. Look, uh, I promise you I'll get it sorted for tomorrow. Yeah, no, honestly, I will. I'll be in tomorrow night. All right, I'll see you then. Bye. <sighs> Come on, Louise. It's time for bed. Oh, Mum, nothing. If I hear that tune one more time, I'll go mad. Now, come on, hurry up. Oh, that'll be Rachel and Jack. You've forgotten the keys. Oh, it's you. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. Who were you expecting? Oh, Brad Pitt. Who else? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr Crosby. Come in. Actually, I just called over to see how you were bearing up after the court. Oh, I've been feeling terrible. Oh, that's understandable. And Terry's just gone mad at me for crying off work. And I promised Fia to go round and let her know how I got on today. Maybe I could nip round there now and talk to her. Samantha, I did make it quite clear to you, didn't I, that I could not undertake any more babysitting duties. Oh, please, Mr Crosby. Well, look, couldn't you just help us out? It'd only be for half an hour or so. Look, if you do me this one favour, I promise you, I won't ask you again. All right. Half an hour, but that's all. Oh, thanks, Mr Crosby. You've saved me life. to sleep at last. Poor little Jen's still missing her dad. Yeah, well, I told them. Mick's trying to get his act together, but he don't want to know. It's like as if they just don't trust him anymore. We're going to have to convince them. They're going to have to go home sooner or later. I think it's just because you want me it all to yourself. I think it's about time we christen this place, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. 
The fancy man's looking a bit early, isn't he? Sammy? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have gone to court. Why? What's happened? Well, they're bringing me case before the Crown Court. They're going to send me to prison for you. I know they are. You better come in, love. Uh, hi, Sam. Oh, hi. What's going to happen to Louise if I end up in prison? You won't. Yeah, well, maybe she'd be better off without me anyway. Find her a proper mum, someone who can actually look after her. Come on, you deserve a life as well, you know. And I've had to let Terry down tonight and all. I'm sure he'll understand. Yeah, but I can't keep ducking and diving and hoping for the best. I just can't afford a babysitter on my wages. I'll just have to give it up. Well, at least your time will be your own. <sighs> yeah, well, I've got nothing else, have I? Well, you've got Louise. Yeah, I know, and I know I should be grateful for her, and I do love her, but I need a life. I mean, look at me. I've spent one night in on my own with her, and I'm chewing the carpets. Well, you can't get too much of a good thing, you know. And when I come through all this court business, even if I do get off with it, I mean, what have I got to look forward to, eh? I've got no job, no money, no independence. I haven't even got my own home. Oh, Sammy, love, don't think like that. Why not? It's the truth, isn't it? I mean, whatever way you look at it, Fee, my life's a complete mess. Come on, love. We're going home. Your mum will be worried. From now on, this is my home. Not leaving you here on your own. Stop suffocating me, will you? You can't control me life forever, you know. We'll leave you to it. I've tried to believe you, Nat, to accept what you've told me, but I can't. None of it rings true. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. I need to know what's changed between us, Nat. And I promise you, whatever happens, I am not giving up on us. Jules, please don't do this. Whatever it is that's come between us, I know I'm going to get to the bottom of it. So you can either tell me the truth right now, or I'll do whatever it takes to find out for myself. Morning, Samantha. What's good about it? I'm just on my way to Lelouth to have me notice in. Are you sure that's the right thing to do? Yeah, well, I haven't got any choice, have I? And anyway, if I keep letting Terry down, he'd probably end up sacking me anyway. Well, at least the court should see you're trying to do what's best for Louise. Morning. I, um, wondered if we could have a quick word. Go on, then. Would you mind giving us a moment, please, David? It's private time. About Louise. Hey, you can say whatever you want in front of Mr. Crosby, because unlike everyone else around here, he's actually on my side. I, um, just wanted to let you know that I've been summoned as a witness for the prosecution. And I wanted to say that I'm really sorry. Oh, that's big of you. Well, I'll bear that in mind, eh, when you're standing up in court, bad-mouthing me. Look, if it was up to me, I'd rather not have to do it. I'm sure Samantha realizes that you... I wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for you. It was you and your smug wife that got social services involved in the first place. We did what we thought was best for Louise. I could go to prison over this. Louise could be taken into care. Is that what's best for her? Look, 
I know you feel that the system isn't exactly weighted in your favor. Oh, save your breath. The best thing you can do is to stay away from me and Louise. You've caused enough harm already. <laughs> Morning. All right. How's it going? All right. I'd better get back to the salon. Yeah. See you later. I'll see you later, Fee. Hello there. Uh, I'll go look in the shop. Have a chat with you now, Fee. Leo, are you? Uh, we better get off. Don't want to be late for school. Come on, Gemma. Gemma. See, Max made an early start this morning. Well, he is under rather a lot of pressure at the moment. Financial pressure. Max told me you asked him to repay your loan. Well, I should have thought that was a private matter between Max and myself. I'm concerned with the restaurant as well, you know. Susanna, that money was an investment for my daughter and my grandchildren. Since they're no longer here to reap the benefits, I'm sure you'll understand I have to withdraw my funds. Is there any way you... Actually, helping young Samantha with her problems has made me realize just how vulnerable Patricia really is. I have to do whatever I can for her and the children. But... Now, just you listen to me. I don't want you interfering in our business. You've done quite enough of that already. Morning, Sammy. You're a bit early for your shift, aren't you? Or are you trying to make up for landing me in it last night? Oh, listen, I'm really sorry about that, Terry. Well, that's why I'm here, really. I've come to have my notice in. Oh, oh, you're not, are you? I thought you liked working here. Oh, I do, Terry. And believe me, I'll be dead sad to leave, but I just can't find anyone to mind Louise. Oh, go away. There must be loads of childminders around. Yeah, but by the time I pay them £5.50 an hour, I'll have nothing left. What were you going to do, get another job? Oh, I wish. It won't be that easy to find something to fit in with Lou. No, I'll probably end up signing on. Oh, well, I'll be dead sorry to see you go. And there'll be a few punters who are going to miss your happy smiling face behind the bar. Hey, you're still going to work tonight, aren't you? We've got a party coming in, and we're going to be rushed off our feet. Yeah, why not? I might as well enjoy me last night of working for a living before I turn into a dull light. for a week or so, then we go back to your parents again. Mum, what's the point of that? Then no one gets disappointed, do they? So we've got to keep moving houses every time one of our parents throws a wobble at it. Well, it's a small price to pay if it keeps the peace, isn't it? Look, I know our families don't get on well, but we can't let that stop us living our lives. I don't mean that. I mean, it's... I just feel funny about living in this room. Why, what's wrong with it? Well, it's probably haunted, isn't it? Oh, don't be soft. It's never George actually rotten in here for ages before they put him under the patio, you know. Oh, don't be saying that. It's true, bets on me, they rotten in that bed for ages. Anyone for a cuppa? What's up, love? Look as if you've seen a ghost. What's up with your cup? Uh, a few problems with the kids, you know. Why, what's up? Well, we had a row and uh, they don't want to come on. Yeah, they're uh, staying at fees at the moment. Missing them? Oh, terrible, mate. Not like kids. Get under your skin, don't they? I still miss Danny, you know. It's been seven today. Seven today? Doesn't get any easier. I think about them all the time. Yeah. Don't know what I'd do if anything happened to my little Ruth. Don't see enough of her, really. But if she ever needed me, I'd be there like a shot. I still remember my two being born. Dead little and vulnerable. The minute I set eyes on them, my heart went out to them. I thought I'd be the best dad in the world. Who's that? I was just trying to phone Jules, see if she's all right. Does Nat know you're ringing her? I'm worried about her. She really put me in my place, didn't she? She's just looking for someone to blame. 
But I'm beginning to feel that she's right, the way Nat's behaving at the moment. And all that stuff about Molly coddling him so he can't make his own decisions. Mum, you and Dad have been brilliant parents. Jules is just clutching at straws. Just because her parents treat her like she's a little girl, she's decided to lash out at you as well. That tells me you think you're moving out. It's not because of us, is it? Of course not. You know what it's like. Once you've moved away from home, it's hard to go back. Even if you have got the best parents in the world. <laughs> but things are a bit cramped here, aren't they? I mean, Nat's got his resets to do. I don't want to get in the way. They're too important. Well, you know who has got a spare room? Who? Jules! Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, you're on the door now, like me? Yeah, I'll be signing on from next week. Um, listen, Rach, you couldn't look after Louise for me, could you? It's my last night at the club. Oh, I've only been back two minutes. You already rolled me in for babysitting. Yeah, but, I mean, I wouldn't expect you to do for nothing. I mean, I'd pay you a proper hourly rate. How much? I don't know. How about 150 an hour? Yeah, sounds all right. Beats working for a living. Hey, Rach, how are you doing? All right, thanks. Are you OK? Yeah, just come in to sort this louse. Uh, listen, I'll give Louise a tea and I'll put her to bed and then I'll get off straight after that. She hasn't talked to you into babysitting last year. You're too soft. I'm getting paid. Typical. Always palming her kids off on other people. It's only for the one night and then I'll be minding on myself. Anyway, it's none of your business. Oh, yeah, managed to con someone else, have you? No, actually, I've had to give me job up. I can't afford to work. What? So I'm working my buns off paying taxes hands over fist so people like you can have an easy ride. I can't work. I've got responsibilities. Responsibilities? You? That's a joke. You don't know the meaning of the words. You do whatever suits you and you leave all the hard work to everyone else. Well, the court will sort you out soon enough. You won't have any responsibilities when you're locked up, will you? I just wanted to say I'm dead grateful that you gave me dad a chance. I know he's had a bit of a dodgy past, so I realise you were taking a real risk. Yeah, well, everyone deserves a break now and again, don't they? Well, actually, Mick, that's why I'm here. It's just that he's been given this really good opportunity to get a lot more involved in drugs counselling. All right. And he's got this invite to a conference, you see, where he get the chance to get a lot more involved. The only problem is, um, he'd need a bit of time off to go. I thought you were leading up to that. I'm sorry, Linz, I just can't afford to have him swan enough. I've thought about that. How would you feel about me covering for him? You? Yeah. Well, I've had experience. I worked in a cafe once. And I'm dead flexible. I could work whenever you want. Days, evenings, whatever. Oh, go on, Mick. It's me dad's big chance. All right, go on, then. As long as he gives me a mention when he makes it his Brookside's answer to Mother Teresa. Oh, great to be made up. Cheers. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What's the rush? Draws on fire or something? <laughs> Guess what? Oh, don't tell me. You've talked crack it out to say sausages. <laughs> no better than that. I just spoke to Mick, told him all about your conference, and said you can have time off to go. Hang on. What if he gives me job to someone while I'm awake? Um, I already have to. Man. You are? Me. I'll be covering for you. Good day. Oh, what's so it sorted? I can go. <laughs> yes! Oh, thanks, kidder. All right, Sammy. Hi, uh, I just saw Seth nip in and see you. I've got a couple of hours to kill before I pick me up. Aren't you the lucky one? Oh, yeah. Loads of time and no money. To have me notice in at the loose. I'll be signing off from Monday. Actually, I'm glad you've called. I wondered if you fancy doing a few hours for me in the beauty salon upstairs. You can earn about 15 quid a week before it affects your benefit. Me working with you? Well, doing what? Making the coffee, cleaning up, answering the phone, looking glam. <laughs> I'd pay cash. I'll take you up and show you the ropes if you like. Yeah, that'd be great, thing. Oh, thanks a lot. You turn your back for one minute, and look what happens. You get all sorts coming in. Faye, what's she doing here? Actually, I work here. <laughs> you are? You're joking. Well, upstairs, actually. You said yourself we need someone to help out occasionally. Hey, this is my territory. People feel reassured when they're seen to by a mature woman. I don't think anyone would argue with that. You should have consulted me first. 
A young bit of a girl couldn't cope with some of the situations that I have to cope with. Julia, your job's safe, don't worry. Sammy's only going to be working upstairs in the salon with me. What about that, Mrs. Arden? Who calmed her down when a pain went wrong? Me! That's who! Well, don't bust a gut, Julia. I wouldn't want to work down here anyway. We'll have to discuss this in private. Jackie, you put me in charge. I'm managing the beauty side, so it's up to me who I employ. Practice your rugby tackles on me. You just told me you're thinking of moving in with Jules. That's not true, is it? I told you this morning it's no good us being in the same house. Yeah, but George, I don't understand. Why are you doing this? Mum gave me the idea. To be honest, I only agreed to even think about it because I felt guilty. Why should you feel guilty? Because they were in this together, that's why. Between us, we've destroyed her. Yeah, I know. That's why I was never going to go near her again. Exactly. Hit the nail on the head there. All right, I see. It all makes sense now. Do so you think that by living with her, you never have to see me again? You got any better suggestions? No. Of course not. As far as I can see, we've got no choice. The more we're apart, the better for all concerned. Good darling. I won't wait up then. Bye. That was Max. He's working late at the restaurant. Poor love. He'll work himself into an early grave if he's not careful. Oh, all that effort he puts in. All those hours. And it can be so long before a place like that shows any real profit. Oh, for heaven's sake, Susanna. You sound like a record that's stuck in a groove. You honestly can't expect me to continue to subsidise a business that my family has no interest in. And you can't expect Max to conjure up £30,000 out of nowhere. Max is supposed to be a businessman. If he makes an effort, I'm sure he'll find the money from somewhere. Oh, hello, Matthew. How was school? Fine. Hmm? Oh, no buttons missing, I hope. <laughs> My form teacher said to give you this. What is it? Dunno. Don't know. Don't know. Dunno. Not bad news, I hope. Uh. No, 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 no. Uh, Matthew, go up and change out of your uniform. I'll be up in a minute. You and I need to have a serious talk. <sighs> the kids still not said anything about when they're going home. No, it's not really down to them, though, is it? I reckon it's about time they put his foot down. Well, he can't get heavy with them, can he? I mean, that's how the trouble started in the first place. He's got to be firm. <sighs> can't argue with that. They belong with the dad, don't they? To tell you the truth, I'm really worried about Mick. He's no good on his own. He lives for them kids, doesn't he? I know. And the thing is, the longer it goes on, the harder it's going to be to sort it all out. Mick will go to pieces without them kids. I've never seen them so low. Matthew, what are you doing reading comics? Haven't you got any homework to do? I'll do it later. Right. I want to know what you've been up to at school. Nothing. Well, in that case, where's your form teacher sent me this already? Why, what's it say? It says you're bottom of the class. Well behind the others. Classified as having special needs. Special needs? That's what Dad says about Alice. Well, it's not the same thing at all. So what have you been up to? Look, I know you're not stupid. So the only conclusion I can come to is that you're lazy. No, I'm not. I'm going to be in the thick old class, aren't I? Everyone's going to make fun of me. That's the least of your problems, Matthew. Just think what your father's going to say when he gets home.
I was lodging this. George, don't go. Don't move out. You know what scares me the most? That when other people are around, Mum, Dad or Danny, I'll forget what's supposed to be normal. I'll do something that gives us away. I find myself kissing you or stroking your face. Because it feels like the most natural thing in the world. This is getting out of control, isn't it? It's so dangerous. I mean, look at the Farnhams. They know all about us. They won't say anything. If they were going to, they would have done it by now. <sighs> we can't be sure of that. Seeing us together around here is only going to remind them what happened. If I'm not around, at least they'll know it's over. All this doesn't change a thing. I still want you. Okay. How did you feel yesterday? When Jewel said she knew why you'd walked out on her? What do you mean, how I feel? You thought she'd sussed us, didn't you? I just wanted to curl up and die. I've never felt so terrified in my whole life. <laughs> I just kept watching Mum's face and thinking, any minute now, she's going to know everything. Why we've got to make sure it never happens. That's why it's best for everyone. If we just stay as far apart as possible. I'll get a table. Will you get me a bottle of cider, please? Yeah, okay. Hiya. Hiya, doll. How are you doing? Oh, great. My tip jar's filling up nicely. Shame it's been last night. Oh, give us a bottle of lager, a bottle of cider, and take it out, of course. Oh, thanks. Don't mind if I do. And I'll have a gin and tonic. Oh, yeah. Will you get that? Come over and join your new work, mate, when you get a minute. It's the Friday night's work's nice house. Oh, I don't think I'll be very welcome. Don't be daft. No one's going to say anything to you. Come over. OK. I'm due a break. Uh, that's £7.40, please. Awesome. Give the change. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Julia, I'll get you one. Port and lemon, isn't it? Oh, no. No, thanks. I couldn't take the food out of your little child's mouth. Oh, please yourself. Right then, son. I'm sorry. Oh, you're all right. All right. So, uh, you just snip back for something? I'm sorry, I ate you. It's all right. It was more my fault than yours. Come on, son. I want to. So does Gemma. Look, we can go and collect you again now if you want. And what if you get fed up with us again? What are you going to do then? I never got fed up with you, son. I missed the pair of you like mad. Look, come on, me, and we'll sort it. I promise. Dad, do you ever blame us for what happened with me, Mum? How do you mean? Why would I blame you? Why do you think she left because of me and Gemma? No, of course she didn't. Don't come blame yourself for that. It was terrible when she left. I mean, we really wanted her to stay. I know you didn't know. I know, but it was no one's fault. Danny was Marianne. She was going to marry her. 
but she didn't want to get stuck with two kids, did she? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that's it, no son. Look, whatever happened in the past, you and Gemma are the most important things to me. Honest. I love you, Dad. Yeah. Everywhere I've been today, she turns up sliming away round everyone. Oh, give the girl a break, Jack. Actually, I've told her to join us for one. Oh, great. Well, that's my night ruined. Yeah, squeeze in. Um, can I turn anyone to a porch question? No, thanks. Go on, I'll have a go. Hey, pretty Rachel couldn't come out tonight, isn't it? She? She's skint again. She's sitting in, isn't she? Hands and Sammy's kids. Oh, come on. Rachel's got a tongue in her head. If she didn't want to do it, she would have said. Yeah, well, I reckon she didn't have much choice about it. Hey, I'm paying Rachel good money to mind Louise. She wanted to do it, she was dead keen, so mind your own business. Do you know what? I think there's something wrong with you. You can't even bear the sight of your own kids. Hey, I'm gone a minute. Just because I don't spend every waking minute with her doesn't mean I don't love her. I've got to have a life as well, you know. Yeah, that's you all over, isn't it? Looking after number one. Oh, I'm not staying here taking this. So go on, condemn me, you self-righteous bitch. I don't need you. Sammy, love. It's all right, Fee. I'm getting off. So you can all have a good jangle about me now because you've got nothing else to talk about in your sad little lives. But, hey, I'm telling you this. I'm not having the likes of you or any court telling me how to run my life. No one's going to take Louise away from me. No one! Morning. Yeah, so I gathered. Max, now that I've caught you on your own for once, do you have any news for me on the matter of my outstanding loan? Uh, yes, uh, hopefully quite soon. I know that Susanna's been looking at the figures just to see how we stand. Max, how you raise the money is not really my problem as long as I get it. Now that Patricia's living in France with her children, I need to go ahead and make more adequate provision for their futures. But £30,000, David, I was rather... I've already told Susanna. I need my money now, and that's all there is to it. Excuse me. He's not going to change his mind, is he? We'll never raise that cash to pay him off. You know, I put everything into that restaurant. Every penny I had. Well, that's it. Looks like I'm going to have to put it up for sale. Oh, the rent's due today, so don't forget. I've got mine here and Katie's. And it leaves you. I haven't got it. Oh, surprise, surprise. Yeah, well, don't panic. I'm not leaving the country. I'll be signing on today, so I'll see where I can get off then. I'll come to the door with you if you want. Might as well have a look, see if there's any jobs. Yeah, I'll have to bring Louise with us as well. And are you going to try for the sympathy vote? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? I don't need people like that feeling sorry for me. No, I'm just going to make them feel guilty for the pittance they'd probably give me to live on. All right, Mick? Two lost sheep. Hi, hey, kids. Hi. Hey, Dad. Is, um, is this what I hope it is? Well, Fee couldn't stand the sight of them anymore, so she's decided to throw them out. Oh, God, I've missed you too. Oh. <laughs> Everything's gone. 
Yeah, yeah. I told you. I got rid of the lot. Anyway, I've got more important things in my life. Like you two. All right, well, come on. Get inside. Dump your stuff. Then turn straight back around and get to school. OK. OK. That was the deal. <laughs> hey. Thanks for everything, mate. So, uh, how do you manage to persuade them to come home? Well, I didn't. They were all packed up and everything this morning. I think your little man-to-man -man with Leo's done the trick. I think there's more down to him than me, you know. Mm. One thing for sure about our Leo, then. He's not a kid anymore. So, can I count you in for any reunion tea tonight? Uh, nah, you're all right. I'll, uh, I've just come back to pick up some clean stuff. He's sorting me out, you know. Oh, look at you. What about Valley? She, uh, the wife's engaged? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, mate, I haven't seen her for a few days. I've been a bit busy with the kids and all that. Stayed mm. around the fees, you know. I haven't half missed her. I don't even know what they're seeing yet. Yeah, hey. Well, <laughs> put it all sorts up, man. See you later. See you later. Hurry up, Lou. See you later, Jack. Rach, fancy going out tonight? Yeah, what if I could afford it? Well, we could go and see a film or something. I don't mind shipping in for your ticket. Are you sure? Yeah, maybe go for a drink later. Yeah, OK, great. Nice, we'll see you after. See ya. Oh, and don't forget, no rent. No roof over me head. Do you fancy coming out tonight? Oh, well, can I? Couldn't see Jackie paying for my ticket. Never mind who babysit for me. At least you've got to tell it to yourself. Oh, cheer me up, why don't you? There's you lot going off to town to have a laugh. And there's me sitting on my own watching the box like some old biddy. I'll take up knitting and go the whole hog. Things aren't that bad. They are. You don't know what it's like to feel old before your time. <sighs> Come on, Louise. <sighs> the door's gonna be shut before we get there at this race. What are you gonna do if they don't give you your end? <sighs> Doss down on their office floors, I suppose. That'd get the message through to them. Life. I've been through the accounts with a fine-tooth comb and I can't see any way we can pay David back in cash. Not without advanced planning and that could take at least six months. <sighs> He's not going to wait that long. Got us over a barrel, isn't he? So, we can't buy him out and we can't pay him what we owe him, so what are we going to do? I don't know. Bump him off, <laughs> stick him under the patio. <laughs> tempt me. <laughs> We could offer him a partnership. You wouldn't. Well, what option have I got? The minute you offer him a partnership, you're in trouble. You know, we might survive if we offered him a sleeping partnership with a monthly income out of the profits. You think he'll go for that? You know him better than me. It just seems dead set on creating this financial secure future for Thomas and Alice. I can't blame him, I suppose. Yes, what he fails to acknowledge is that you've got Matthew and Emily to think about as well. And Matthew has special needs at school, Max. We need to sort out what we're going to do about it. You'll catch up. Don't worry. He just needs time to adjust. But what if he doesn't? The poor boy didn't want to go in again. He hates it. And they still haven't set him up with a special needs teacher of his own. He's stuck in the same class, struggling to keep up with the others. Well, with David snapping at our heels, I don't think we'll be able to afford much in the way of tuition. Well, not for the next few months, anyway. So, the sooner we set up a deal with David, the better. At least then we know where we stand. So we offer him a sleeping partnership, yeah? That way we still have the benefit of his loan about him having the right to crawl all over the place, counting the cruet sets. <laughs> I believe that when I see it. David keeping his nose out of my business. I thought it was our business, Max. But as you've decided it's your business, I leave it up to you to tell him. Hiya. Hi, you're really, aren't you? Well, don't want to be late on my first day. Keen, eh? Yep. This is a real step forward for me, Mick. A chance to earn some cash and to have a life again. Yeah, and uh, to wash all these out for me. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you didn't get Mike to uh, step in for your offer, you know. I mean, he's the one with all the experience. Oh, he can't even find a place for us to live, never mind find a job for himself. <laughs> Hiya. Hi, Hiya, Lince. First day. You working hard? Oh, it's a terrible slave driver, this one. Um, have you seen Sinbad? Only the shops not open? Uh, no, I don't know, you know. Um, well, he might be out on a house clearance or something, because he has to do quite a lot of them. Yeah. So how are you, Mick? Me? I'm sound, I'm uh, feeling great. Still pumping iron? 
No, no. I packed all that in. Completely? Yeah. I seem to be taking all my life. Couldn't seem to find time for anything else. Okay. So you're having withdrawal symptoms? Oh, I'm getting there. Listen, do you want a pizza? Oh, no, sorry. I was just going for Sinbad. Um, listen, Mick. You don't think he's avoiding me, do you? Oh, come on, Val, haven't I know? Um, me. Do you want me to sweep out the van before I do these? No, no, you're all right. Well, honest, Val, I mean, me and Senna are mates, but we don't live in each other's pockets, you know. Oh, well, I'll call back later. See if the welcome mat's still out for me. Thanks, Mick. See you, Val. See ya. See ya. So, what are you making there? I am making a triple decker sponge cake mm. with fresh cream, jam, and lemon waxing. <laughs> Do you make all the gas over this place? Uh, no. See, me and the kids had a bit of a fallout, so I'm cooking them a special tea with a big heart attack cake for a pudding. <laughs> That's really nice. Well, I hope they think so. So you want it to be a perfect cake from a uh, <laughs> perfect dad. <laughs> Have you got an appointment? Uh, I need to see Jackie. Uh, I'll be there in a sec. Shouldn't you be at school, young lady? She's been to sign home with me. Oh, I see. And what's OIC supposed to mean? Nothing. Only I just thought you had a job upstairs working for your maid, Fee. Yeah, but it's only the odd hour here and there. And what she pays me isn't enough to live on. And it's actually less than I'm allowed to earn by law. So if you were thinking of bubbling me to the dough, you can save your breath. I've already had to pack my job in at Lelouth because of the price of childminders. Well, that can't be right. Having a job upstairs and signing on. Oh, and you've declared every little cash and hand job you've ever had. Never mind what you earn here for sweeping floors and making a few coffees. I bet the tax man would love to hear about you. You wouldn't. Well, I won't if you won't. Um, Julia, can you make a coffee for Mrs. Davis, please? My pleasure. Come to pay your rent, have you? Uh, no, I haven't, actually. They're not going to pay me anything till next week. So, what am I supposed to do? Well, wait till then. Look, I tried to get it sooner, but they said it's going to take that long for the paperwork to come through. Well, I can't afford to sub you. Well, what am I going to do? Well, it's not my problem, is it? Mr Crosby's a landlord. If you can't pay your rent, don't come crying to me. Go and tell him. I really envy you having such a close relationship with your brother. <sighs> We've obviously never seen us fight. Well, couldn't imagine you two ever fighting. We have, lots of times. Well, he's dead protective of you, though, isn't he? How do you mean? I don't know, just things he says. He really cares for you. You had a big fallout at your wedding, didn't you? Yeah, things got a bit heated. Families, weddings, all got a bit much. Nat never would. Tell me what it was about. Oh, I can't remember now. Something trivial. You must be sick of me going on about Nat all the time. Of course not. I understand. George. You know, with you and Nat being so close, well, I don't know what you think's been going on inside his head, but I just keep trying to find a reason why he's done what he's done. I was wondering whether something might have happened to him when he was little. I don't mean your mum and dad would have done anything. I mean, maybe some pervy uncle or something. I mean, do I think he was abused? Well, yeah. I mean, at the wedding, there was all those old relatives there. It might have brought it all back to him. Jules, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I just want him to realise what he's throwing away. Have you talked to David yet? Uh, no. Well, can't you do that, Suzanne? I mean, you've got a much better head for figures. Max, the longer you leave it, the worse it will be. Oh, David! Max wants a word! And remember, we can't pay him back in cash. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm sorry. I'm in a bit of a rush at the moment. I have to go to the bungalow to collect the girl's rent. It's about this loan business. We think we might have come up with a solution. A solution? I hope you're not going to offer me an alternative to the hard cash. Well... Uh, no. Well, yes, actually, but it could be seen as a more lucrative alternative. This sounds to me suspiciously like some tactical diversion. No, no, not at all. No, we were just wondering whether cash would be the best option for you. To see if we could find you a better long-term return on your investment. And knowing how supportive you've been of the whole venture, what a keen interest you've taken in it from the start. 
Well, what we've decided to do is offer you a partnership. A partnership? Well, not a partnership exactly. A sleeping partnership is more what we had in mind. Yes, that's right, of course. I, 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 that's what I meant. A sleeping partnership. Look, as you may have gathered, my intention is to invest a lump sum for the benefit of Thomas and Alice's futures. That needn't change. You know your money will be working for you in the restaurant. Yeah, and taking a slice of the profits, well, the children will be catered for in terms of a monthly income. Well, there might conceivably be some merit in it, but I couldn't possibly make a decision on something like this without being much better informed. Now, I suggest you draft a written proposal and I'll give it my careful consideration. That's all I can say at the moment. Anyway, I'll see you later. Non-stop. Way to get them around, eh? It really helps having you down here, though, twisting people's arms to come up for a quick pampering. Right. That's me done for the day. I'm off home now for my pilchards on toast. <laughs> there you go, Julia. Ah, thanks, love. Every little bit helps. I hear that Sammy Daniels has gone to sign on the door. So? Well, she's working for you, isn't she? Only the odd few hours a week when I need her. That's all she can do. Otherwise, she'd have her money docked. And so she should. I've got no time for scroungers. So you get paid cash in hand then, do you, Julia? Uh, yeah. My boss and I, we have an arrangement. Well, she's a pensioner. And the way we're treated these days is a disgrace. I mean to say, the things that we've had to put up with in our lives. And some people still begrudge us a few coppers to pay our winter bills. I'm not begrudging you anything. I'm just saying pensioners aren't the only ones money gets tight for, you know. Sammy was forced to give up her job at the club because she couldn't afford to pay for childminders. It's a catch-22 situation. They don't know they're born, these youngsters, do they? I mean, that Sammy one didn't have to live till the sewers Christ for a start, now, did she? You what? That Sammy one could learn from my generation. It's want, want, want these days. Cars, video, satellites, we're not a thought about to pay for them. Ooh, it makes my blood boil when I think of a young girl like that scrounging her way through life. Julia, I have told you, she is not a scrounger. Hey, what's up? It's not usually this quiet in here. Maybe you should take the hint. Eh, uh, Fee, I was wondering if you had anything going upstairs this week. Well, I might need you for about half an hour or so later on this afternoon. <sighs> half an hour, is that all? I'm sorry, love. There's no one off this week. We've got a full turnout. Oh, it's all right. Half an hour's better than nothing. Uh, I'll go and see if Rachel can look after Louise for me. See ya. Bye. Brazen. No shame at all, that one. And you want to be careful and all you know, love, because if she is found fiddling the dough, you'll be in trouble and all for taking her on. Yeah, well, a court case will be coming up soon. Fiddle and sell's going to be the least of her worries. Any chance of coffee? No. Not until you make your mind up between Val and Fee. Why, what's happened? Val wasn't looking for you earlier. Well, it must be me magnetic personality. Well, I know you've been enjoying yourself having two women on the go for all this time, but I'm fed up with lying for your sin. I didn't know what to say to Val. Do you think she suspects anything? No, I don't think she does. Good. Well, I'm sorry, mate. Just sorted soon, all right? Yeah, I will, I promise. So, did she say anything? Said she wanted a talk. A talk? What kind of a talk, do you think? The same kind of talk the fee wants. One with a ball and chain written all over. Why can't they make bigger me legal, eh? Like? See you soon. See you later. Right, Liz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you find the place all right? Yeah, no problem. I've crunched the gears on the van a few times, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. <laughs> so, how's the cake coming on? Perfect. Take a look at that. It says, Welcome home, kids, from the big fella. You've spelt welcome wrong. Hmm? Oh, I don't believe that. Don't panic, it'll fix. Oh. Well, it's a triple decker, isn't it? We slice the top off and re ice it. Yes, yeah, suppose so. What's that pot make for me? Yeah. Must have been uh, some fallout for you to go to this much trouble. Can't ever remember my dad baking us a cake after one of the famous Cork Hill riots. Yeah, well, I screwed up, didn't I? Put myself before the kids. And you don't do that, do you? Tell you what, though, Lens. I'll never hurt my kids ever again. Now, to work on this. 
Most people stick their heads in gas ovens, not tumble dryers. Hi, right, well, how's it going? Okay, apart from missing you. You haven't been around to see me for days, what's up? Uh, yeah, well, I've been busy with the shop and everything. I mean, I have managed to stop myself from slashing my wrists. But just about. <laughs> you know, this machine's making a terrible noise. Yeah. Have I done something to upset you? Of course not, no. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It feels different between us. No, of course it isn't. Do you know, I think it might be a 50 pence caught in the waist. Never mind that. Look at me. <sighs> Ever since you went away, it's been... <sighs> Look. I'm going to ask you this once, and I want an honest answer, OK? OK. Is it back on with you and Mandy? Mandy? <sighs> no, I haven't seen Mandy for days. Well, I have seen her, but not like that. I mean, it's just... <sighs> to be honest, Fran, I mean, I've been up to here with Leo and Gemma and all that, and I meant to phone, honest. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, do you want to go out tonight? Well, I don't see why not. I was hoping we could have a proper talk. A proper talk? What about? Look, all I want to know is, am I standing here making a fool of myself, or is there any chance that you may feel the same way about me? Come on, Val, you know how I feel about you. Yeah, but I've gone way past the odd date stage. I want to know if we're really serious. I want to know if we're going to go for it. You know, long term. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just that, you know, Things are really difficult for me at the moment, that's all, and, you know, I've... Um, yeah, mate, there's other stuff in here, you know. It's all good swag. Uh, sorry, what was I saying, then? Oh, never mind. I'll call back when you're less busy. Oh, Val, don't go. Oh, no. No, Seems to be short. I know. Sam didn't have enough money to put hers in this month. You know, they're packing a job in at the club and that. Hey, listen, Rach, could you do us a favour? I'm desperate. That was Fee on the phone. She wants me to work in the salon until closing time. One of the girls has gone home sick. So would you look after Louise till tea time? Oh, I've got a nip into town, actually. Oh, please, it'd only be for the odd hour or so. I mean, I'll be back before you know it, and I'll pay you. Mm. Oh, yeah, OK, but only for two hours, all right? Oh, that's brilliant, thanks. Come on, Louise. Do you want to go and play in the back garden? I'll bring you a drink in a minute. Go on. Um, Sammy missed Cross for the rent. Oh, right. Oh, look, I'm sorry I haven't got it. I mean, I have applied for housing benefits, but the social said I won't be getting anything till next week. So, in the meantime, there's nothing I can do. Well, that's all very well, but you know it doesn't do to start getting behind with basics like rent. Before you know it, you could be owing hundreds of pounds. Oh, it's only till next week. Ah. But how do I know that Samantha won't do a midnight flit? Well, how can I? I'm appearing in court soon. Exactly. And I hope you're going to declare your income to the relevant authorities. What? Well, this job you've got at the salon, it's all legal and above board, isn't it? Oh, not you and all. Yeah, it is. But the more hours I do, the more money I lose. So I'd better make sure I don't work too hard, otherwise I'll be wasting my time. Look, everyone thinks that people on the dole have got it easy, but they haven't. I mean, look at me tomorrow afternoon. I'm supposed to be seeing my solicitor. It's going to cost me £2.40 for my bus fares. And if no one's around to help me out, I'm going to have to pay someone to pick Louise up from school and then look after her till I get back. So before I've spent anything, I'm already eight quid down. It's impossible to make it last. But look, I'll be in a fiver off fee now, and I'll only need about three quid for food for me and Lou. So I'll drop the other two quid round for you. See, as a first instalment for me rent. Anyway, look, I'll see you. Are things really that bad? Worse. I had no idea. She's really up against it, isn't she? I brought some mugs. I'll just put them over here. I never thought I'd do this. What? Taking these. Tranquilizers. I always thought they were for loons. People in straitjackets foaming at the mouth in there. I couldn't believe it when the doctor told me they might help. I stood ashamed. You shouldn't feel ashamed. Loads of so-called normal people take them. I hated taking the first one. I didn't know what to expect. But then slowly I felt the panic go. All that stuff in my head. 
They help you forget. Dead in the pain for a bit. I know how you must have felt. You reckon? But I've realised I don't want to forget anymore. So I won't be needing these. You're doing the right thing, Jules. Coming off them. I'm going to face up to it. I'm going to get myself sorted. Good. I'll let it take me under. But I've had enough of that now. Time to fight back. I'm not going to let him walk away from this. I'm going to find out the real reason he dumped me. I'm going to win him back, George. I know I am, no matter what. A selection of Brookside books is available from most bookshops. Samantha, glad I caught you. Um, is it about the rent? Uh, no, no, no. I've managed to suppress my Rackman-like instincts for today. No, actually, I've called over to offer you a lift to your solicitors. Oh, right. I'll come. Well, after our little chat yesterday, bearing in mind your current financial straits, sir, uh, I thought at least I could save you the bus fare. Oh, and is me expecting an eviction notice? <laughs> well, listen, um, as soon as you're all set, um, give me a knock over there. I wait your call. Oh, right. Oh, thanks, Mr. Crosby. Right, I'll see you see later. See you in a minute. Uh, David, um, I've got a copy of the partnership approval you asked for. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, Susanna's based the wording on a normal sort of contract of this kind. Oh, has she? Well, I'm afraid that may not be very much help to me, Max, I'm afraid, because uh, I wouldn't exactly describe myself as an old hand at reading legal documents. All oh, right. They can be an absolute minefield to the layman. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, um, a contract between friends, a family, I'm sure you'll uh, trust Susanna's judgment. Well, actually, there's a chap I'm rather friendly with at the Over 55s Club. He's a bit of a legal expert. I'll ask him to run his eye over it and uh, pay particular attention to the small print. Excuse me. There wasn't anything else, was there, Matt? Sorry to interrupt. No, no, it's all right. No, no, I'll, um, I'll look forward to your decision. Right. I'll see you anon. How are things? Oh, you know, busy. I was just thinking we haven't seen much of you and Susanna recently. Socially, I mean. I was beginning to think you were trying to avoid us. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Well, how about coming over for a drink and a bite to eat sometime? The thing is, running a restaurant, it's difficult planning evenings out. Oh, right. Never know what might crop up. <laughs> well... How about popping out for a pint with Ollie sometime? Maybe Sunday lunchtime? Uh, Sundays? No, it's my only day off with the kids. Uh, Susanna had had my guts for garters. Oh. Well, maybe if you get some time, you could give it some thought. Yes, yes, we'll... Uh, we'll, we'll see. Max? Is something wrong? Wrong? Have we done something to upset you? No. No, it's nothing that you and Ollie have done. Um, far from it. Look, if you really want to know what the problem is, maybe you should speak to your son.
Aren't your exam resets this week? Yeah, I've got one on Friday. Well, shouldn't you be doing some revision? I'm thinking about it. Yeah, well, maybe you should think a little bit harder. You've got to get your act together, Nat. Hi. Don't you hi me. What have I done? That's what you're about to tell me. What? I hope you're not stopping him from doing some revision. Max has told me, Nat. Told you what? That you and he have fallen out. Is it something that happened in the Cotswolds? Mum, I don't know what you're on about. Well, that's when it all started, isn't it? Max and Susanna have barely spoken to us since you came back. And you haven't been the same since. What's happened? I asked Max if he and Susanna would like to come over for a meal sometime, and the look he gave me, he'd think I was one of the Borgias. Look, they're just a couple of snobs, that's all. The men couldn't wait to get away from me. I just felt so embarrassed. Well, he wouldn't tell you what the problem was. He seemed to think that Nat would enlighten me, whatever that means. Look, I've got some revision to do. What's it all about, Nat? Nat! Yeah. All right, thanks for the change. Oh, any time. Oh, so, uh, have you got that Sammy one working for you today, then? She's doing an hour for me later. She had somewhere to go this morning. Oh, she's not gone for a job interview somewhere else, has she? You just won't give her a chance, will you? Well, she doesn't deserve one. So where's she skiving off to this time? She's got an appointment with her solicitor. She's due in court in a few weeks. Oh, yeah, the Home Alone scandal. So, uh, when's that, then? I haven't the faintest idea, Julia. Well, I hope they throw away the key. She should get life for what she's done. And what about a little girl? I'd better get back upstairs. I've got three bikini lines waiting. See you later. Don't be too hard on Sammy, eh? She's trying. Oh, I'll believe that when I see you. Hi. You won't believe what's just happened with the Simpsons. What? I've just had Belle asking us over for a drink and a bite to eat. I mean, can you imagine us all stuck over there playing happy families? Well, it's only to be expected. We are neighbours and Belle thinks of us as friends. Yeah, I know, but we can't go on keeping their children secret from them forever. It'd be practically impossible. Never mind whether it's the right thing to do or not. Do you know, she even insisted Ollie and I going out for a pint. Well, what did you say? The truth. Max! Well, what did you want me to say? I made my excuses. <gasps> and then I told her that if she really wanted to know what was going on, she should ask her son. Oh, Max, you didn't. Well, I have to say something. We can't go on lying to the woman, pretending everything's rosy. <gasps> but, Max... Can you imagine Ollie and me going out for a pie and a pint, talking about the weather, the football, his incestuous offspring? You weren't rude to her, I hope. No. Well, to be honest, I wasn't really in the mood for her. I mean, I've just had to spend half an hour outside school with Matthew. Oh, how is he? He didn't want to go in. I had to give him the long fatherly chat in the car, trying to convince him that he's not thick. Well, he isn't, is he? No. But he's worried about letting us down. I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe we should spend the extra money on a tutor for him or something. I, I don't want to have him consigned to the dustbin at his age, and I don't want to panic him either. Well, it all rather depends on David, doesn't it? Whether he's going to hold us to repaying this loan or not. He's really enjoying making us squirm, isn't he? <laughs> Do you know, he took that contract off me and took it to one of his old legal friends for him to have a look at it. He's been deliberately awkward about the whole thing. Well, one thing's for certain. We can't spend anything on Matthew's education until we know what David's plans are. David's plan is to screw us for every penny you can get. And the way things are going at the moment, it's going to be an unmitigated success. Daniel, what are you doing here? Wondering what the big secret is. What big secret? The one everybody else knows that I'm not allowed to. <sighs> Well, you're imagining things. Well, why do I keep getting sent out of the room, then? <sighs> Your father just wanted to talk to Nat alone, that's all. What about? Whether he's a queer or not? Look, I don't know who's been filling your head full of all that nonsense, but I can tell you now that your brother is not gay, right? <sighs> now, will you take these upstairs for me and put them in the airing cupboard? <sighs> oh, look, Daniel, Daniel. When the time's right, we will talk about all this, OK? Oh, spare me death by family conference. You forgot these? Dan's taking the rest upstairs. He's a bit upset about why no-one's told him about Nat, all this gay nonsense. Who told Dan? 
Maybe he overheard one of our many discussions, unless Georgia told him. What did he say? Didn't say anything. Told him it was a lie. Well, and I could do without that kind of comment. Yeah, and I could do without this whole situation that we've been dumped in. Well, I've got work to do. What are we going to do? I don't know. Maybe I should go and see Susanna. If Max and Nat have had a fallout, she's bound to know all about it, isn't she? David's taking his time deciding about the restaurant, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's like waiting for a puff of white smoke to appear above the Vatican. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, these tapes are all in the wrong boxes. I mean, there's Pocahontas here in my X-Files box. Mm, I asked Matthew to tidy them up. He really wasn't in the mood. Well, he's made a right mess of it. Oh, it's not his fault, Max. Well, whose fault can it be? I mean, it's just pure carelessness. Oh, Max, I'm really worried about him. I was thinking he hated it when we split up. Do you think that might have had an effect on how he's doing at school? Well, whatever it was, I mean, now we know he's got a problem, we can uh, find a solution. Oh, get it. Oh, God, it's Belle. Oh, well, answer it. No. Look, if you want to speak to her, you answer it. She's probably going to insist that we go out for a drink or something. I thought you were supposed to be ill. I am. I thought you were supposed to be revising. Yeah, I am. Come in if you want. You sure? Well, just as long as you don't jump on me. You what? You're meant to be gay, aren't you? All right, yeah. Well, don't worry, you're safe. Did Mum tell you? I'm not, not stupid. That's what all the whispering's been about, hasn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. I wish everyone would stop treating like a kid. I've read all about this gay stuff at school. It's not as if I'm going to drop dead with shock if you just tell me the truth. Look, Dan, things have been a bit mad at the moment, all right? You know, with the wedding and Jules and JC Bulldog Bradley. <laughs> I wonder what Mum's doing over there. At the farms. I don't know. She seems to be getting on quite well with Matthew's mum. Yeah, she does. Right. Better get going. I can come back later if it's not convenient. No, no, now's fine. Mm. Aren't you staying for coffee? No, I can't. I've got one or two things to sort out at the restaurant. Chef, up to his eyes. Well, don't be long, Max. Well, you know how Chef is. Just make it sharpish, OK? Bye. Yeah, bye-bye. So, is everything all right? Um, well, no, not really. I wanted to talk to you about Nat. Oh, right. It's just that Max is so obviously trying to avoid Ollie and me, and then he made this cryptic remark about Nat. Oh, Bellamy, you know Max. He can be a little odd at times. Well, I call that more than just a little bit odd. What did he mean about Nat? And did anything happen in the Cotswolds? I thought we'd all had a lovely time. Oh, we did, Belle. We did. Now, how about a nice cup of tea? I've got um, Earl Grey or Lapsin Souche. What would you prefer? I'm afraid my last appointment took longer than planned. One complication leads to another, you know. Right, uh, Samantha and, um... David Crosby. We met after Samantha's first court appearance. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, he's been helping me out. Samantha lives in my house. I'm her landlord. Oh, right. Now then, let's see. Right, today we need to spend more time working out Exactly what your defence is going to be. Well, it wasn't really my fault. It was my sister Katie's... It was more of a breakdown in communication, actually. You see, Katie, her sister, wasn't actually aware... Yeah, that but she... I'd organised everything. Yeah, I mean, I got... Well, we can go through the details of exactly what happened later. First of all, I need to talk to you about your plea. I'm not guilty. Well, I've had the papers from the prosecution, and, to be honest with you, they've put together a pretty strong case against you. It might be better coming to some sort of accommodation with them. You mean a deal? No, not a deal. Mitigation, under the circumstances. Um, it would be good practice to enter a plea that would save the court's time and expense. Hang on, can I have this in plain English, please? Well, it might lead to lighter sentencing. It could mean the difference between a fine and going to prison. Yeah, but I thought the idea was that I got to explain my side of the story. Well, yes, but it's important that you convince the court that you're not going to repeat the offence. But I didn't commit an offence. I didn't just abandon Louise. Unfortunately, Samantha, all the court are going to be interested in is hard evidence, and this is pretty damning. In my opinion, the best way to get through all this with the least amount of damage is to plead guilty. No way! 
Miss Gorman has a great deal of experience in this field, remember? Yeah, well, I don't care less about experience. I'm not pleading guilty to something I didn't do. I'm sure she's only suggesting something that's in your best interests. Yeah, well, I don't care who she is or what she's suggesting. I'm standing up for what I believe in, and that means I'm pleading not guilty. All right? must have been oh, terrible for you. Well, it's the understatement of the year, really. And Nat just won't confide in me. I know he's worried sick about something that's written all over his face. It's even beginning to affect his university work. But what about Ollie? Can't he talk to him? Well, he's tried. Nothing. The only person who can get anywhere near him is Georgia, and she's moved out. She's left home? Yeah, she's moved in with Jules, trying to stop her from tipping over the edge. Has Jules accepted that everything's over? Well, she feels the same way as I do, really. She's determined to get to the bottom of things. So you still think this gay story is um, a cover-up for something else? Well, I know it is. Look, Susanna, I'll be honest with you about this. Nat's problems all seem to stem from that week when he was in the Cotswolds and really hasn't been the same since. And now Max is hinting that there's something up between them. Did something happen in the Cotswolds that I should know about? Um, well, how do you mean? Well, did Nat say anything or, or behave oddly in some way? Well, um, we had just walked out of his wedding rehearsal, so I suppose, well, you know. Well, did Max and Nat have words about something, maybe? I mean, Max has hardly spoken to us since the wedding. Has Nat done something to offend Max? He... Uh, look, when we were at the cottage, Max, well... Uh, both of us, we... We left Nat and Georgia to their own devices. You know, we yeah. hardly saw them. They obviously had a great deal to talk about. Yeah. It's really up to them to tell you if something happened. All I'm saying is that pleading guilty might also be seen to be uh, saving the court's time and be taken as an expression of how sorry you are about what happened. And when it comes to sentencing, we'll be able to present the social inquiry report. Look, I'm sorry, I'm not being funny, but I can't believe I've got a sissy listening to this. Mitigating circumstances could include lack of support from Louise's father. Oh, I wondered when he'd be dragged into it. The pressures and difficulties of being a single mum. Anything to stop you looking unreasonable. But our biggest problem is the fact that Louise was left. And whether that was for ten minutes or ten days, it should never have happened. I've told you, I sorted it out. Haven't you listened to a word I've said? Yes, and it won't carry much weight in court. <sighs> You're the defence. I can't wait to hear what the prosecution's going to be like. I'm just trying to give you a clear picture of what to expect and how to prepare to get a positive outcome. Oh, I think I know what to expect. No help from you for a start. Oh, getting emotional about this is not going to help. This is my life we're talking about here, and my little girls. Of course I'm going to be emotional about it. I'd have to be some heartless cow not to. Miss Gorman, actually, I think it might be best if we um, came back and discussed this another time. Yes, I think that might be a very good idea. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I'm not interested. I'm just another name on your file. Well, you'll have to find yourself another mug to help you pay your mortgage, because I'm out of here. So you won't be needing these, will you? Not seen any sign of Sammy, have you? Why oh, didn't you turn in? I was expecting her 20 minutes ago. Typical. Give that one a mile, I should take an inch. I've uh, been meaning to ask how things going with you and Simbad. Oh, you know, we've not fallen out yet. Oh, have you been seeing Simbad? Didn't you know? We've been caught in a while. Go away. What a shame about him and Mandy, though, wasn't they? After all they'd been through together, and then with the little one and all. Has Mrs. Gilbert been in yet for a depilation? In my day, people were proud when the union was blessed like that. <laughs> Julia ought to try a leg wax one day, don't you think, Jack? Oh, yeah, I'm sure you'd be glad to oblige. Well, that dilapidation. Ooh, I can't think of anything worse than having my ears pulled out by the roots. Apart from Mrs. Bingo on a Friday, of course. <laughs> I wish Sammy had shifted herself. Well, you've been waiting a long time for that one. She'd probably met another fella and got off somewhere. Oh, come on, Jack, give her a break. She'll be here in a minute. Mm. 
gone and done it now, haven't I? Dug a big hole for myself. Oh, never mind. All is not lost. We'll find someone else to represent you. I did the right thing, sacking her, didn't I? <laughs> well, there's not much point in worrying about it now. We'll just concentrate on getting you a better solicitor. Oh, you're kidding, aren't you? They're all the same, looking down the snobby noses at me, just because I don't speak with the right accent or sit there nodding like some dimwit. Anyway, look, thanks for helping me out. I was supposed to be in the salon ages ago. I'm going to try and uh, squeeze a few hours in, you know, before I go and pick Louise up, so I'll see you later. Uh, hang on. I've just had a thought. I'll have a word with Max. Now, he's got some round-table friends in the legal world. I'm sure he can fix us up with some contacts. Yeah, but they'll just be the same as that waste of space we've just seen. And anyway, I can't see Max going out of his way to lend a helping hand. Look, well, I'll see you later. Ah, oh, Max, just the man. Morning, Dave. I wanted to ask you about that solicitor chum of yours, the one who represented you the last time you were up before the Beaks. Uh, last time? Oh, sounds like I make a habit of it. <laughs> well, um, what was the fellow's name? Um, Warren Newlove. Why? Not before the Beaks yourself? <laughs> no, 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 good heavens, no. No, it's actually for poor young Samantha. She's very unhappy with the solicitor she's been using, and your man did get you off, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't get me off. I was innocent. Presumably, this is to do with her abandoning her child. Yes, she has to appear at the Crown Court in the not-too-distant future and uh, defend herself against whatever accusations they throw at her. Could you let me have the chap's number? Be honest, David, I'd rather not. Why ever not? Well, because I have no intentions of getting involved with anything to do with Sammy Daniels. The poor girl's caused me enough trouble already, thank you very much. For heaven's sake, Max, it's a telephone number I need. I'm not asking you to stand up in court as a character witness. No. I just don't want to get involved, David, OK? In fact, I was rather hoping you'd be ready to talk about our offer. The restaurant? Surely that's more important than Sammy's court appearance. Well, to be perfectly frank, Samantha is badly in need of some support right now, and you happen to be one of the few people who might have been able to help. As for your offer, I've arranged a lunch booking for some friends at the restaurant tomorrow. I've decided to defer my decision until then. Nat, what do you want? I'm sorry, um, look, can you spare a minute? Look, Max isn't going to be very happy if he comes home and finds you on his doorstep. I saw Mum leave. I need to speak to you. Look, it's really awkward out here. Is there any chance we can meet? Nat, I really don't want to get involved. This is between you and your parents. Look, we, we can meet up tomorrow, away from here. I'm really not sure I should. Look, I've got a stupid exam reset. We can have lunch after that. Please, just hear my side of things. That's all I'm asking. Well, whatever. Give me a ring and we'll try and sort something out. Now, will you just go? I'm sorry about being late before. I survived. How did it go with the solicitor, anyway? Oh, it didn't. I can't stand talking to people like that. It's like I was on a conveyor belt. Sad, guilty, no marks. Never mind. Maybe she'll come in here one day and you could get your revenge. Attack her with a full body wax kit. <laughs> Hey, love. It's only me. Well, was actually. Come on in. I've just brought Mr. Crosby up. He came into the salon asking after Madam over there. I just wanted a quick word, if possible. Oh, right. I did tell him it'd probably be inconvenient that she'd be busy, you know, with her being so late, like. I promise you this won't take a minute if I could just. Don't mind us. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. I'd dock her off her wages if I were you. Good idea. Is Jackie docking your wages while you're up here? She wouldn't do that to me. <laughs> Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Oh, it's all right. No more than I expected. Max just wasn't prepared to help her to I'm afraid. He's just totally into himself these days. Yeah, well, you can't blame him for not wanting to get involved. Well, not to worry. I'm sure we've found someone you can prove of. Yeah, well, we don't need to. I've found someone. Who? Me. I'm going to do it myself. I mean, who needs solicitors anyway? Samantha, my dear girl, you can't possibly represent yourself in court. It's an enormous undertaking. You need training, qualifications. I don't care. I'm sick of people having me down as a sad loser, and I'm not Mr. Crosby. I'm not going to be trampled over. I'm going to show them in my own words. I'm going to walk into that course and defend myself. I'm going to get Louise back on my own.
Next tonight, John Peel presents a brand new series about moving house. Sometimes fraught, often funny. Tonight, meet the volatile Bensons, the do-it-up-and-sell-it Hillary, plus Glenn, Brenda and their 12 children. Moving people after the break. She says she's made a bright start at school. Yeah, well, she was more than ready to start last term, I reckon. How's the childcare situation going? It isn't. How do you mean? Well, I, I couldn't afford to pay a childminder on my wages from the club, so I had to pack it in. But I've been down to the social and I'm getting benefits. Oh, I see. And are you managing okay? Well, no, I'm not actually. I'm skint. But there's nothing I can do. I mean, I do the odd hour at a local shop, but apart from that, I can't get anything. Have you received an allowance for Louise's school uniform from the education? <sighs> for what it's worth, yeah. And how are you feeling? I'm fine. You can tell me, you know. I'm here to help. I'm fine. You must be getting worried about the court case by now. No, not really. Bet you'll be glad when it's over, though, eh? No, actually, I'm looking forward to it. Apart from having to wade through all this lot. Samantha, hello. Me again. I've got a terrific range of books from the library. I'm sorry, I do beg your pardon. Hello, Mr. Crosby. Hello. Uh, Mr. Crosby's been helping me get ready for the court case. Oh, that's good. Nice to know Sammy's got friends around to support her. Well, of course, I can't pretend to know as much as a qualified solicitor, but I think uh, between us we can make a pretty decent stab at it. And it's amazing what a range of legal books you can get from the library these days. Hasn't your solicitor helped clarify the situation for um, you? Well, I haven't got one anymore. I've sacked her. But we'll be fine. Absolutely fine. Haven't missed a single episode of Kavanaugh, have we? So, is Sam finished in the club then, or what? Yeah, Teddy's got rid of her, not before time and all. She's a cheeky mare, that one. Oh, tell me about it. She caused me nothing but grief from the day she started. And she's been taken on at the beauty salon, you know. Go away. Oh, yeah. That fee's busy, mate, with her, from what I've heard. Who's this? Oh, that's Sammy one. You know, it's Casey I feel sorry for. Having a sister giving you a bad name like that. Oh, well, at least she's out my face anyway. Teddy's well writ. I'll see you as Tra. Tra. Why are they telling you what you said behind my back? You're safe. I don't slag family. Oh, right. Glad to hear it. Listen, Bev, could you do me a favour? You saw the sign. No credit. Not since your dad clumped down. I don't want credit. I want you on video. What? I hope not like that Max Varnum and his pervy missus. No, no, no. Just a straight interview, documentary style. Gonna make me famous? Well... I don't know, maybe, yeah. I'm doing a load of tapes, you know, in a Bangkok experience. I've done Lindsay and I just want everyone's views, you know, when we were over there, what was going through the minds and that. So I was going to go on telly? Well, maybe, yeah, if I can get a uh, broadcaster interested. But I just want to do it for myself. So you're interested? All right, then. As long as I can have a star on my dressing room door, a fit young male makeup artist and the Hollywood Hills behind me, all right? Right, I'll film it in my bedroom and you can get changed in the bog, OK? See you later. Tra. Small star would have done. I can't pretend that I think this is a good idea. Yeah, well, I do. I'm quite happy to stand up and tell everyone what happened. It's all very well wanting to tell your side of the story, but surely you want to use all the help you can get. I've been through all this before with Samantha, and she is adamant. Oh, don't forget, your solicitor is there to help you. She's on your side. Persuading me to plead guilty. Is that my solicitor getting the best for me, is it? Well, possibly yes, under the circumstances. Samantha feels that there are mitigating circumstances. I understand the way you feel. But I'm not sure the judge and jury will. They'll only look at the facts of the case. And no matter how sympathetic they are, it's the hard evidence that matters. They'll more than likely rule against you. Can't you see that? Yeah, well, not when they've heard what I've got to say in my own defence. Look, I'm only your social worker, but my advice would be to get straight back to your solicitor and pick up again from where you left off. No way. 
At least pleading guilty might stop you getting a custodial sentence. You must be used to dealing with people who've had the pride kicked out of them. All I want to do is find ways of keeping you and Louise together. Yeah, well, it might surprise you to hear I've still got some pride left. Sammy, you are facing a really serious charge. You sure you understand what could happen? Mrs. Woods, if I may be allowed to comment, I belong to what you might term the old school. And I'm afraid I have very little time for do-gooders and spoon-feeding and every other manifestation of the nanny state. I don't think Sammy is taking her situation seriously enough. Samantha is a young woman of singular determination and doggedness. If she is determined to defend herself in court, I think we should give her every possible encouragement, regardless of whether we consider her decision to be right or wrong. My job is to make sure she gets the best advice she can and to create the best circumstances for mother and child to live together again, successfully, happily and in safety. I'm here to help Sammy, not fight with her. Have you any real idea how difficult it's going to be to represent yourself in court? The prosecution will run rings round you. Look, I've got Mr Crosby to help me. And as far as facing a jury, well, I can tell my side of the story better than any lawyer could. I mean, what does some overpaid lawyer know about me anyway? Nothing. I'm just one more job on a production line to them. They don't give a toss. Look, I know I might not know the rules like a judge does, but when it comes to somebody accusing me of neglecting my Louise, well, they're going to have a serious fight on their hands, and I know who's going to win. Aren't we, Mr Crosby? I was going to make some coffee. Not for me, thanks. You OK? Just looking at these old photos. Me and that our engagement party and us at Christmas. Can't even bear the thought of looking at the wedding ones. It won't do any good torturing yourself. Where do you think he'd be at this time of day? Nah, he'll be at uni. Why? I really want to see him. Well, I've got to do something. I'm going anyway. But he'll probably be in a lecture or something. I think he's got one of his resets today. I know a couple of places that he goes to, so that's a start at least. Well, let me come with you then. I'll drive. Suit yourself. But as long as you give us time to talk to each other on our own. Yeah, of course I will. I just want him to know that I still love him. And no matter what's happened to him in his past, I'm prepared to stand by him. He must be in a terrible state. And I know I can help him come to terms with this. Right. I feel let me. Come on, let's go. Even though I'll probably live to regret this. We'll look a bit stupid if he's living it up with the gay rights debate in society. Sammy's very lucky having your support. Well, I'm sure I'd be much more help if I'd had some legal training, but uh, hopefully we'll muddle through somehow. Do you think you might be able to talk her out of representing herself in court? <sighs> she really does think that no one else can put her side of things properly. She won't be doing herself any favours. My biggest fear is it'll just make her look very irresponsible. And that's the last thing she needs. Well, let's just hope she proves us all wrong. I'll see you again, I expect. Yes, indeed. And uh, thanks for all you've done. Bye-bye. Mr. Crosby, have you got a sec? Well, I've got to go to the restaurant, Michael. Max is expecting me. Well, it's only a quickie. I've got to get changed before I go, old son. But, um, all right, go on. Far away. Well, it's just, um, I'm writing this journal and filming this sort of documentary thing, you know, about when we were locked up in Thailand. Oh, yes, yes, right. Where do I fit in? Well, me old fella said he used Max's fax a lot, you know, when we were over there. And uh, I was just wondering if there was any old copies knocking around. I can't say I've noticed any. Ah, oh, well, never mind. Listen, I just wanted to photocopy them and put them in my book. Yeah, the problem is this place got blitzed when Susanna moved in. I mean, I'll have a look around, but uh, don't hold your breath. Yeah, I'll be much appreciated. Seems like you're putting a lot of effort into this project of yours, Michael. Yeah, I am. It's just there's so much to tell about the whole experience, you know. I can well believe it. Yeah. I wish Lindsay did. She keeps going on about getting a proper job. I'm supposed to be down a job centre now. I don't think she realises how important this is to me. Oh, I'm sure she'll come round eventually. Yeah, I hope so. Well, you soldier on and good luck with it. Oh, and uh, send me a copy when you're finished, eh, if you can spare one. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm not going to give up till it's finished. Good. on the phone. I wasn't sure if I got the right place. Yeah, sorry about that. Can I get you a drink? No, 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 I'm fine. Do you want something to eat? No. Look, Nat, 
I could really do without getting dragged any further into all this. I'm sure it must be difficult for you. But you can't use me and my family to help you cover things up. I'm really sorry about getting you involved in all this. But that's why I want us to meet here away from everyone else. I mean, just to explain my and George's side of things. Max and I are in a very difficult situation. We're your parents' neighbours. Your mother and I are friends. I mean, how can I look her in the eye knowing what I do? I know. Nat, I could never even begin to understand about you and your... But I'm worried about your mum. We had a long conversation yesterday. You're causing her a great deal of pain, Nat. This isn't all that easy for me, either. She doesn't believe for a minute that you're gay. But she knows you're hiding something and she is not going to let it drop. You can't blame her. It's affecting all the family. Your dad's worried sick, too. And all the time, I have to lie to her, pretending I don't know the truth about this... This... I know, I understand all that, but I don't know what else to do. You've got to tell her the truth. No, I can't. Well, I could. And I'm beginning to think I should. I mean, it's all too... horrifying to keep a secret. Max and I want to be able to look at your parents without waiting for a bomb to go off. No, but that's what I'm so frightened of. Look, I'm really sorry you and Max found out about me in Georgia. And I'm sorry about all the trouble it's caused, but you can't tell my parents. It's just going to make things worse. Oh, Nat. Look at yourself. How could things possibly get any worse? Hiya. Hey, sorry to bother you. Oh, it's all right. What's up? Well, I was just wondering if you were interested in coming back and working at the club for me. Oh, I have only just got sorted with the social. Well, I could give you a bit more money if that'd make any difference. Well, no, it still wouldn't help. I mean, by the time I've paid tax, that's the reason I left in the first place. Well, why don't you forget about the tax? I'll pay you cash in hand. Yeah, but I still need to pay a babysitter. What if I make sure it's enough to cover what you need? Well, to be honest with you, it would help. Well, as long as no one bubbles me to the social. Well, it's only going to be you and me that knows about it. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, all right, then. When do you want me to start? As soon as you get your babysitter sorted. See ya. Right, ready when you are, Bev. Make way for Beverly Mack, star of Stage Screen and The Trading Post. There's no need to get all told up, you know. I'll be the judge of that. Well, it's only a mini documentary, nothing special. Mike, the second that video comes on, I am captured for posperity. I mean, anyone could see this. I could end up on stars and then I'd do me Whitney Houston. Now, where do you want me? Look, you stay, it'll be fine. Right. Oh, eh? Is this thing on? Yep. So, what do you want to know? Well, just your memories of the whole experience, really. How you felt when we were over in Bangkok. Enough said. Now, I know things must have been really bad in Thailand, but, well, I reckon things were worse here. I mean, what with Ron and the Gorgils? They were all falling to pieces. I mean, someone had to be the rock. And when it came to making the Thai authorities sit up and take notice, well, it's a good job I was there, I can tell you. Right, Anne, why don't you slip in there? Ken, how about that for you? Melanie, can we have some menus over here, please? Oh, it's a marvellous turnout, isn't it? Right, you look after them, too. Max, <laughs> you better get your sleeves rolled up. The girls are rushed off their feet already. Oh, well, they're not normally this busy for lunch. Oh, I did mention that I managed to organize a substantial party booking for you. Well, or should I say for us? I've decided to accept your offer of a partnership. Well, now, that's wonderful news, David. And this is my attempt to demonstrate that I intend to be active and committed in my new role. Ah, well, we weren't actually expecting you to uh, have such a hands-on relationship with the business. Well, I've never been one to do a job by halves, you know that, Max. Uh, yes, yes, true, but we did offer you a sleeping... <laughs> well, this is hardly the time to discuss it, old son. We've got customers waiting. Look, why don't you go in the kitchen, make sure Chef's coping, all right? I'll attend to the party up here, all right? Ah, well, nice to see you. He comes here sometimes. Jules, this is the third place we've tried. We could go on all day. But he's got to be somewhere.
What's up? Do you think we'll be all right parked here for a bit? Yeah, I should think so. But why? Don't you want to try somewhere else? We're going to sit here until he comes out. Jules? What's happened? He's in there all right. In full view of everyone being all lovey-dovey with some woman. Did you and George never talk about what you were doing? I don't know. I don't know. It just sort of happened. Did you talk to anyone else? I'm the first person I've ever said anything to. I've always been terrified of telling anyone else about it. I mean, I still worry about shouting something out of my sleep. But you must have known it was illegal. I mean, George, it's your... Yeah, I mean, of course we knew. I mean, we tried not to. We tried to stay away from each other. But it never worked out. I can't help myself. I know what I'm doing could destroy the whole family, but... Oh, I'm sorry, now. I, I can't listen to this. You're involved in something which is deeply, deeply wrong. I'm sorry. You've got to face up to it, Nat. I can see how it's affecting you. You've got to find a way to tell the truth about this. Who knows what sort of long-term damage you'll do to yourself if you don't. Look, we can't talk in here. I'll, um, let's settle up and we'll go out and get some air. I know what George and I are doing is totally in the wrong. I don't know how to explain how it feels. I'm sure there must be somebody can help you. Some sort of counselling or whatever. But listen, we can't tell anyone. But what about your mum and dad? They've devoted their lives to you. They can us if they found out. You're their son, Nat. They'd help you. Well, they wouldn't. Well, I'm some sort of freak, aren't I? Some sort of perverted freak. <laughs> We went to London. Hey, well, my God, I had to literally stop the train me from climbing up Big Ben in protest. I mean, I was all for being up there for the duration. Let me stop short, because I'm going to head for Heights. Wait till I tell all the little old women in the shop. They'll be wanting copies for themselves. I'll see you later. Yeah, thanks again, Bev. Bye. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, I've been interviewing Bev for the documentary. Yeah, it's hard to know what's fact and what's fiction with it. Well, this is fact. It's my first pay packet from Mick. I bet you'll be glad when your dad gets back to take over. It's not exactly the most interesting job in the world, is it? Actually, that's what I like about it. Just ordinary people coming in, doing ordinary things. Yeah, that's what I said, boring. Normal, you mean? Look, Mike, this is the most normal we have had in ages. It was great. Do you have any folks of mine just moving back over here? Why? Well, it just saved me having to drag on me. I had to gear over there. Have you been doing this all day? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I got some good press cuttings from the library and Bev and I recorded. Mind you, it's going to be murder, didn't it? She kept touching up a lippy and all kinds. So, you didn't make it down the job centre then? Nah, too busy. I thought I'd go tomorrow instead. You know, when this is all cut together, it's going to be cracky, you know. And I need to do loads more work on my book and all. And as for my poor Ron, we all thought it'd be the death of him. First he loses little Tony and, and I thought of losing another one. I thought it put him in an early grave. These earrings making too much of a clanking sound for you. See what I mean? I don't know, you can just sit here reliving it over and over again. I mean, it's history now, isn't it? Oh, shouldn't we be moving on? Yeah, of course we should, but that doesn't mean to say we have to forget about what's happened, Linz. We've had a unique experience, and that's what makes it worth doing. That's what makes us special. I mean, imagine if this gets on cable or satellite or something. But, my, this isn't enough for you, me and Kylie. Not if we want a place of our own. We'll get by. I don't want to just get by. I want us to be able to afford a decent life together. Look, I'll, I'll go and get Kylie. And how do you fancy coming to the park with us? I'll be dark by the time I finish this. Right, so... See you later. You enjoying your meal, Robert? Good, excellent. Pity Emma couldn't oh, make it. How about you, Dorothy? Splendid, splendid. Oh. I'll see you later. 
Well, isn't it nice to see the place so busy? Yes, terrific. Tell me, are these people, are they from a particular society or club? Yes, indeed. These are all from my over 55 club. Oh, I see. So you know most of them, then? Oh, of course, yes. Actually, this is the party that are booked in just before Christmas and sadly were let down at the last minute by your good self. Oh, well, at least they'd come back. Nice to know there's no hard feelings. Oh, no, not at all, not at all. Especially when I told them how keen you were to make amends. How keen did you say I, I was to, uh, to make amends? Well, they were delighted to accept my offer, made on your behalf, of course, of uh, lunch on the house, courtesy of your new partner. On the house? Yes. Special dish of the day, Max. Revenge. Best served cold. What are you swapping off on? I'm just trying to find a few things out from a court case. Oh, when is it? In a couple of weeks, I'll be made up when it's over. I'll bottle up then, eh? Yeah, well, I've collected all the glasses in. So you fancy yourself as a bit of a Perry Mason, do you? No, I just want to make sure I'm well informed. So is that book full of laws and that? Yeah, sort of. Hope it's got a big section on people who don't care about their kids. You what? We should have read that before you went swanning off, leaving your kid on her own. Look, why don't you just keep out of it, eh? Hey, all right, you two. Come on, this is a bar, not a boxing ring. Pity. Hey, that lot over there have been supping some ale tonight, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. I bet they don't get paid cash in hand, though, like some people I could mention. What? Oh, don't you recognise any of them? Why are you, Hardy? Uh, not even since the last time you went to sign on. What are you going on about? Oh, it's a leave and do for one of the girls at the Dole office. I'm surprised they haven't recognised you yet. Oh, look, will you save him and I'll go bottle up? No, you carry on. I'm happy where I am. <sighs> oh, wait. Oh, hey. Hey, uh, uh, what can I get you? Yeah? Uh, three minutes, couple of sandwiches. <laughs> to someone. If you've got no idea what it's like. I was terrified coming to see you today. I thought you might have spoken to Mum. But no, I just... I just wanted to walk under a bus or something, you know? Anything not to think about the things I've done. Oh, come on, Nat. Don't start talking like that. Who is she? What are they doing? I can't tell from here. I have to go around the other side. You've got to tell your mum and dad. You've got to. Why? I mean, it's finished between me and George. No one has to know about it. Nat, please. No more running away. The only way this will ever end is when you open up to someone who can help you. Uh, oh, I don't know, professional counsellor or whatever. You can't carry on like this. You'll have some sort of a breakdown. Oh, mum and dad, I can't. Look, it, it's over. I'll get over it, and so will George. Look, it would only just cause more pain. We, all of us, we have to forget it ever happened. You won't tell them, will you? Promise me, please. It's not my place to tell them. It's your life, Nat. It's up to you to decide whether you want to be honest with yourself and with them. But, um, no. No, they won't find out from me. I knew he wasn't gay. I knew it. So that's why you dumped me. He's having an affair. With Mrs. Farnham. 